Welcome back to my channel guys and uh, today I have something <laughs> well completely different for those who have been watching my channel it is a Sigma 70-200 f2.8 APO EX DG OS lens it's optical stabilized and this lens I bought because my main job is photography Right, as I said, some of you might know I am a photographer. Uh, it is my full-time job. I have no other income. I have been doing it for a number of years. And uh, I absolutely love it. Photography is a fantastic career. It's a nice job to have. But it is um, also one of those things that gets kind of expensive. And equipment like this lens is pretty expensive and they do not last forever which means you have to replace them from time to time and uh, well this lens is going to be replacing this one now this is a fantastic it was a fantastic lens it's my old tamron uh, 70 to 200 2.8 and it has been serving me fantastically for many a year but it is starting to develop to, to develop some problems and uh, i decided rather to replace it instead of uh, trying to have it repaired now another thing a lot of you guys might wonder is why do i use sony and why did i go for the sigma instead of another tamron well quite simply sony has left south africa they exited out there is no support from sony when it comes to professional camera equipment so we have been left pretty much high and dry and because Sony uh, uh, left South Africa uh, on the camera market a lot of the suppliers stopped importing uh, the lenses and other equipment so we are having a hard time as professional photographers who actually decided to support Sony are having a very hard time and when I want to replace my Tamron lens with another Tamron, well, guess what? None available in South Africa. Now, uh, this is not supposed to be an unboxing video. I'm just going to junk all of this out because I am going to give you my honest opinion about this lens. And I'm not going to be doing a complete review and all kinds of nonsense. If you want to review, if you want to see specifications about this lens, please go and look at their website. This is just a little strap, which is for this nice little bag, which in all probability I'll never use because this lens is intended for my Sony A99 on that side. And perhaps if I'm using another lens on the Sony A99, I'll hitch it onto this uh, Sony A850, uh, A which I have on that side. Fantastic camera still there. And uh, let's see what it is all about. Get it out of this bag, yeah. Just make sure there's just some plastic and more. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice little lens hood, obviously, yes. Oh, that's a pretty big lens hood. I must say, this is a beast of a lens. It is heavy. Unfortunately, oh, that lens cap just came loose. Uh, unfortunately, I must also say that this lens is quite a bit heavier than I was uh, anticipating. But there we go. Now, I know that a question a lot of people ask me and, you know, at every wedding and most events I get to, people do ask this question of why do I use Sony? Why not just switch to another brand? And, uh, well, therein is a bit of a problem because it is uh, one of those things, once you've invested so much time and equipment into a brand, you um, are pretty much stuck with it and converting to another brand i'm not going to mention other brands is just too expensive i've got uh, uh, not just these two cameras i've got a couple other cameras as well it's all sony it's all a mount cameras now this is just if you have a aps-c um, camera which will be like my sony a a77 or a55 or one of those i'm going to be using this on my a99 now this lens hood, let me just compare. I just want, I don't want to compare quality, etc. Now, this lens is very, very heavy. I'm going to take the Tamron off here. I'm just going to weigh the two lenses and 
feel them by hand. Hmm. Actually, they feel pretty much about the same weight, but hold on. I actually have a, a kitchen scale on which we can pop them and feel what the actual weight is. Let's take off the lens hood on them and weigh them without the lens hoods. We put on our lens and the total weight is 1,482 grams. Now that is pretty hefty. I'm going to take that lens off. I'm going to bring back the Tamron. Now, I must note the Tamron does not have the collar on. The collar was actually stolen. And uh, that is a total of 1,174. I have now removed the collar from the, uh, the lens. And uh, I want to take the total weight, including the lens hood. Because this, this is how you're going to use the lens anyway. And, uh, hold on, let me just get it there. Interestingly, the weight is 1,402 grams. And the weight without the collar right, is 1,326. So, the collar actually adds 77 grams. That is the lens weight without the collar, but with the lens hood. I'm going to add the weight of the collar and then it becomes 1,542 grams, which is pretty heavy if you consider you've got to carry this around all day, which is why I removed the collar because the collar is actually pretty heavy. And uh, yes, there's people who say, don't remove the collar, put your, your strap onto the collar and all kinds of things because it puts strain onto the, um, the lens mounts, etc. But you know what? I use my camera equipment every day and um, I need to change lenses from time to time and I do not try to put too much strain onto these things but it is working equipment but anyway there we go 1403 grams for the um, lens with the hood I've got the old Tamron here which is 1252 no collar lens hood let's add the camera and see what the total weight is on the camera. Now if we attach the lens to the camera, I've got the Sony A99 yeah, and uh, I do not have a vertical grip. The vertical grip actually adds <laughs> quite a bit more weight. And uh, on my previous A99, which was stolen, I did have a vertical grip and I chose not to add it again because it makes this entire camera system just incredibly heavy to carry, lug around all day. Now, as you can see, there that is already with the new Sigma lens, 2,246. That's almost 2.3 uh, kilos or kilograms that you have to carry around over your shoulder. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot of weight when you just look at that little figure there, but you lug around this heavy camera all day and your shoulders and your neck starts feeling it. Now, this is another reason why I have, uh, let me just show you here, yeah, I've got the, this is the old A850, um, 8, which is an older camera, with pretty much the same sensor, also 24 megapixel, and I've got a, um, a Tamron, this is basically my wider lens, and it's, it's a sufficient lens, I like it, it's a 2875 uh, 2.8, with a vertical grip with the batteries installed and if we add all of that let's just see if we can get it balanced on there that's 1.9 kilogram with that little lens I do not want to add a heavier lens onto that that's a total of if you add these two cameras together four kilos you're carrying over your shoulder the whole day the a77 which was my uh, uh, initial camera as a backup but uh, has now become my backup backup camera with a vertical grip and the 1650 uh, lens. Now, bear in mind, this is a, a APS-C camera, weighs just, and this is quite a bit lighter, 1.793 kilos with a vertical grip and two batteries already installed. So uh, the more pro you start getting, the heavier this equipment starts getting. And you have to start lugging all of this equipment around. And it just gets very heavy. It gets, you strain your shoulders. And yeah. But anyway, there we go. 
that's a Sony A99. One battery installed already in there with the Sigma 7200 lens. Now, next thing, obviously, I want to test is what is this image quality like? So I'm going to take, out, take it outside and just snap off a couple of shots of random things. I'm not even going to do people at this stage. I'm not going to do special lighting. Let's just see what the camera is like and how it performs. Welcome to my front yard. Now, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to take a couple of photos using my transmitter I've got here. This is a Radiolink 8010 transmitter that I use to fly my quadcopters. And um, I'm going to take a couple of photos of that using the Sigma 70-200 uh, at various apertures, etc. I, I don't want the photos to be very professional looking, etc. This is purely a test to show you guys what you can expect in real world natural light scenarios. I'm actually shooting in pretty harsh, harsh sunlight. You can see there's a bad shadows here. I've got strong sunlight coming from this side. And we can see what real world scenario will be like on this lens using the Sony A99. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to put it into aperture priority for now. And then we can see uh, what uh, f2.8 and from there stepping down to the smaller apertures is going to be like I've got a nice green background there and uh, let's see what this transmitter looks like when we take some nice photos now we must bear in mind that when we are shooting at aperture 2.8 that no lens out there is, it is, it is going to be at its sharpest 2.8 is uh, the widest the lens will go and unless you're shooting with a prime lens, 2.8, and even with prime lenses, 2.8 is not necessarily going to be very sharp. The first shot I'm going to be doing is going to be at 70 millimeters. I'm going to be very cl fairly close. The, the background is uh, quite a bit of a distance, so we should get a bit of a bokeh. And there we go. Now that was at 70 millimeters at 2.8. I'm now actually going to go all the way to 200 and then uh, we do the same shot at uh, 2.8 I'm obviously going to stand back a little bit to try and get it almost the same size okay now I know it's a little bit smaller but uh, you can see the bokeh effect is quite amazing at 200 millimeter it's beautiful it's soft it's nice and round and I just love the shape of this bokeh I'm gonna actually do another shot here and a little further back and there you go <laughs> how amazing is that I can just see that on screen in the camera it is amazing it blows out the background beautifully and the image looks uh, if I zoom in quite acceptable so yeah that's a 2.8. Now let's step it up slightly. I'm going to put it up to f4. Now we know with two, most 2.8 lenses in the 70 to 200 uh, range is f4. It is ultimately sharp. So let's take a look. I'm going to do another one at 70 millimeters and another one at 200 millimeter. That's nice. It's 70 millimeter f4 even looks good. And we step back at 200 millimeter. I must admit, even at f4, that bokeh on this lens is pretty amazing. But let's put this lens to a further test. And one thing I want to mention before I go on, you've got various levels of optical stabilization on this lens as well. Now, besides the image stabilization you have in, in the camera, you can activate optical image stabilization. Now, unfortunately, it's pretty difficult for me to show that working, but I did test it last night in um, very low light conditions, and I was pretty amazed. The optical stabilization, you take the camera and you just shake it like this, and you can actually see your live view image stay pretty much stable, just a normal, uh, shake as your arm would and uh, yeah it takes uh, care of those kind of shakes but anyway 
Let's switch to the A77, which is an APS-C size sensor, so it's obviously a little smaller. So we're also going to use that little lens hood adapter, and I'm quickly going to show you how we do that. I now have the 70 to 200 on the Sony A77 camera, and uh, this is an APS-C sensor camera, which means your sensor is a little smaller. And on a 70 to 200, that means that it effectively becomes in the region of something like a 100 to almost 300 millimeter lens calculation plus minus i'm not going to exactly try and translate that it depends on lens to lens but because your field of view now actually narrows and becomes longer it extends beyond what your lens hood normally sees which means they give you this little lens hood extender and what you would do is we take off our lens hood and we put on the extender this way around put that in and we put it in there and that actually makes the lens hood a little longer because it's a narrow narrow field of view you are going to get further distance and thus you can actually do a little more of shade protection from the sun but anyway let's take a look on the sony a77 i'm going to put it in aperture priority again and we are going to again start at f 2.8 and uh, do a 70 millimeter shot on this one which remember we have to multiply by the factor of 1.54 aps-c and then uh, take it up to a 200 millimeter as well and uh, test it from there. So, first test 70 millimeter at 2.8. Now, already I can tell you that first shot pretty much impresses me because just looking at <laughs> the live view from this uh, image, it's smooth, it's clean, it's it's much sharper than I was expecting for a 2.8 uh, image at 70 millimeter on an APS-C. Now I'm going to take it all the way to 200 millimeter. I'm going to have to stand way further back to actually get this thing in there because obviously the range on a, on a APS-C increases. So let's take a look. Wow, wow is all I can say. Looking at the just the in-camera image, now this is before I've even seen it on the computer, I can tell you that is impressive to me. And I'm sure that any of you guys who <laughs> choose to grab one of these lenses, you will be suitably impressed as well. Do bear in mind that there is a, um, a depth of field difference between a full frame camera and a APS-C camera and it's very hard there's a lot of scientifics behind it and, and how optics works etc and in some cases not in some cases often you will find that you will get a totally different kind of bokeh when you're shooting on an APS-C now it does not a lot of uh, professionals will try and tell you you're going to get less bokeh not true because your focal length increases on an APS-C if you keep your distance the same for your frame you're gonna get exactly the same type of bokeh it may look different but you're gonna get exactly the same uh, type of bokeh so um, those who say that you get less bokeh on an APS-C than you do on a full frame is not always exactly true it depends on distance but anyway, technicalities, you can always, always go and uh, research that to see exactly what it looks like. Now, let's do our next test, which is going to be to push it up to F4 to increase the sharpness and increase our depth of field slightly. And we are again going to start at 70 millimeters. There we go. That's pretty pleasing. I like that at F4 smaller bokeh 
and uh, it's still nicely blurred and I like that image and uh, let's take it again up to 200 millimeter and as we can see on that image it appears a little bit sharper the, the, the focus point is slightly a little to the right but the image is beautifully in focus and the bokeh is amazing at f4 so all in all i would say i'm very impressed with this lens there you go guys that is uh my impressions shot on two different cameras the a77 and the a99 and uh, that's just what, what i think about the lens my opinions this is not a review go look over the way much more reviews on this lens there are thousands it's not a new lens but uh, I'm happy and from what I've seen from the couple of shots we've done out here this lens is going to serve me for many years stay tuned guys please subscribe to my channel for more videos uh, I do concentrate a lot on uh, um, quadcopters and hexacopters and builds I've got a couple of projects coming up but stay tuned please subscribe many more videos to come Jesus, I should actually have cleaned this thing full of dust.